Hi everybody! Welcome to the long-awaited Fall Front Breeches Workshop. In this video I'm going to discuss how to create the problematic for some Fall Front Breeches. Um, the same is also true for trouser uh, construction of the same time period. So I'm going to spend a lot of time looking over how to create a proper fall front breeches. I'm going to use a mixture of hand sewing and machine sewing on these ones because I want them to be indestructible, but I'm going to take you through it step by step. Welcome to The Sweet Shoe. My name is Kelly Grant. I am proprietor of this small studio and I hope you like the video that's coming up. If you do, hit the subscribe button. Give me, oh, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the dangly bell. Okay, gang, so I spent the last hour or so cutting out uh, breeches. I've got my four pieces of legs here, waistbands, watch pocket, um, some plackets, some bearer pieces, the fall front lining, and some side seam pockets. I'm using a mixture of reclaimed cloth, which is why you see some rough bits there, um, and some new cloth that has been heavily washed on warm water and dried in the dryer. So hopefully the wool will not shrink after it leaves my care. And the next step, or the first step, now that I've got everything cut out and all laid out, I'm going to serge the legs of the trousers. I'm making trousers, not breeches. Um, but I'm gonna take the time to serge all of the outside edges. And I'm doing this so that my client can then throw them in the wash and hang them to dry and maybe give them a quick breast, but he won't need to because this fabric is is a bit like iron wool. Um, it's going to be hard wearing, uh, but I want him to be able to not have to care about them too much. They're not a delicate item. So I'm going to take you through the process step by step. We're going to use machine and hand sewing to get the um, breeches made. I'm going to serge and we'll see you in just a minute. Okay, gang, so there is a right and a wrong way of surging, just like there is a right, well, let me, a right side and a wrong side to your cloth. Um, my two, I'm working on the back piece right now. Um, my two right sides are together to keep them nice and clean. I'm going to separate them out. And there is a right and a wrong side to surging. So if you keep the right side of your fabric up, you're going to have the right side of your serging on the right side. Now this is done so that when you sew your seam allowances together right side and press your seam allowances open, that's what you're going to see. Not that side. Wrong side, right side. I'm also being really careful to guide my fabric through the serger, not pull it through because I'm working on a lot of bias edges and I don't want the serger to pull that edge out of shape. And when I get to the corner, I'm gonna go just past the corner, I'm going to raise the needle up, lift the presser foot, 
pull the stitching off that back feed dog, reposition, lower the presser foot, and continue surging. I'll do that again. Needles up, presser foot up, pull off the little sticky outy bit, lower the presser foot, and continue sewing. And what that does is give a fairly nice corner to your sewing. There's one back leg done. I didn't bother doing the top edge because that's going to be enclosed in the waistband anyway. And it's not even going to ever see the light of day once it gets sewn up. So I'm going to serge all four leg parts. That is about everything that I need to serge. And I'm serging them while they're single pieces because it's a lot easier than serging after they've been sewn together. Sew them or search them while they're flat and single pieces, then sew them together. Welcome back to the studio. Uh, this morning I am going to tackle the fall front of the breeches slash trousers. And all I need are the fronts, which you can see have been surged. I have not cut the slash yet for the fall front. We're going to do that later. The fall front lining, the plackets, and the bearers and their lining. We're going to set the bearers aside for a minute and the plackets aside for a minute and just work on the fall front. The first step we are going to do <clears throat> is sew this front seam on both the trousers and the lining. You can see my tracing marks where I wanted to plot out. I'm going to pin this seam. Yes, I use pins. And I'm pinning across the sewing line so that I don't ease in my fabric at all. When you pin with the sewing line, you're easing that fabric in and creating more ease on the back side and less on the top. So we want to pin crossways. And if you've got one curve that has been stretched or eased out of shape more than the other curve, you pin the start and finish, the middle, the middle, the middle, the middle. Okay. My lin linen doesn't have a right side or a wrong side. So I'm just going to pin those two together as well. And then I'm going to sit down at the sewing machine and do this seam by machine. All right, so I'm going to put my glasses on. I'm gonna put my presser foot down. Both of my threads are in the back there. I'm gonna lower my needle. I'm at 5 8 seam allowance.
And I'm not going to be looking at the needle. I'm going to be looking up, up here somewhere. And also here to make sure that my seam is sewing nicely and straight. And I'm going to hold on to those threads so that I don't get a bunch of thread happening at the back of my sewing. I'm going to backstitch. Yeah, I'm mostly looking over here just to make sure that my seam allowance is staying roughly the same all the way along. And I'm slowing down in the curve and backstitching at the end of the seam. Now, before I lift my presser foot, I'm going to get my next piece of fabric ready and I'm lifting it ever so slightly to get the fabric underneath, right sides together and back stitching. This one is easy. You can see where the seam needs to be. This is my chalk line. I'm not sewing over my needles, or my pins rather. I'm sewing up to the pin and taking the pin out. When you sew over your pins, you create issues with the tension. And I'm going to clip the threads. I do this with every seam. even the short little ones. And now I'm gonna press these seam allowances open. You can hear the dog in the background. He's uh, trying to find a comfortable space, but I am moving around constantly and his dog bed is currently taken up by a bunch of stuff that I have to work through. Um, so he's gonna be in the video, you're gonna hear him. Um, I'm going to press these seam allowances open. I'm doing it on a pressing tool because um, I find it easier and so that the fabric just lays out of the way. <clears throat> and I have my steam in my iron. If you have a domestic iron, make sure it's full of water all the time. And I'm going to steam that seam allowance open. And I'm just barely touching the surface of the cloth. If you really nail it down and don't have steam, you're going to create shine on the wool. And contrary to popular belief, this is the most important tool in your sewing room. So it doesn't matter if you do these seams by hand or by machine. If you're not pressing as you go and trimming your threads as you go, then your product is not going to look as professional as it could. So this is going to be a little bit trickier to press open because it's linen and it's a curve, but I'm just using the tip of the iron to press that seam allowance open. There we go. Next step, right sides together. I'm going to match up that seam and stitch the lining to the fall along the top edge. And I'm going to do this by machine first and then by hand. A 
I'll be right back. Okay, so my lining is a little wide. That's okay. I can feel where that seam needs to start. It's right about here where that needle is or that pin is. I'm having a day today not knowing whether these are needles or pins, aren't I? <laughs> <clears throat> Again, holding on to your thread so that they don't create a bunch in the back of your th sewing. Back stitching. Pulling out the pins. Now, I'm coming up on this bulk of seam allowance and I'm making sure that the seam allowance is flat on the underside as well by holding it down. And you'll notice that my fingers are not anywhere near gonna go underneath the feed dog or in the, and the presser foot. Uh, because I've sewn with industrial sewing machines and industrial sewing machines will sew your fingers to the, the garment if given half a chance. So you learn to keep your fingers out of the way. And you can see here that I'm only going to go up to about that beige line. And backstitch. And I'm going to press this seam allowance open too. Oh, you're going to notice the cat from time to time as well. He uh, is not bothered by me sewing, but uh, you'll hear him snoring from time to time. So that seam that we just sewed, we are going to press those seam allowance open. Um, I do have another pressing video that Pierre is going to link somewhere with a tag that you can go and have a look at the different types of pressing and ironing. Um, I'm using my trusty pressing tool again to hold the fabric out of the way. You can usually find these at uh, secondhand shops for really good prices. You don't have to buy new. So I'm going to press that seam allowance open. And I was giving it a good squash there. You can see that I've shined the wool a little bit. Oh well. Now, I'm going to put the legs out of the way. And when you press your seam allowances open, when you go to turn them to the right side or the lining side, um, you're going to find it a lot easier to do this next pressing step. So it just folded where it needed to fold. And you can see a tiny little bit of blue there. I want that tiny little bit of blue and I'm going to press again and I'm being a lot more careful not to squash the fabric just press okay ready for the next step I'm going to sit down for this one Okay, so I'm using a buttonhole twist and I was given a bunch of thread recently and I was told that it was silk, but then I just looked at this lovely label and it's polyester. But you know what? If um, somebody can tell that you're using polyester thread over silk thread just by looking at it, um, I'm going to question that uh, because I'm sorry, I had to look at the label to see if this was silk thread or polyester thread. Um, and and I live in rural Nova Scotia, and getting things like silk thread means that I have to order it in. If I can just run over to the five and dime and pick up a spool of thread, I'm going to do that. Okay? Uh, I save my good threads for um, where they count, and buttonhole twist is buttonhole twist. Okay? You might notice the difference when you're sewing with it, um, but um, don't be a don't be a thread snob. Okay, we're gonna get some breeches made today. 
So this next step I'm doing by hand and it's important if you do it by, that you do it by hand because you want the curve and this is where your tailoring techniques are going to really come into play. So I'm going to take my polyester thread and wax it like I would normally wax my thread and then I'm going to press my thread to set the wax and I'm using steam. And I have my thimble on my finger and hopefully my needle will thread in the first go, which it didn't, <laughs> but you know, put the pressure on, put the pressure on. It's not going to go again. I don't think. No, grab another needle. Thread is a little bit too heavy for this particular needle. That eye might be better. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Ooh, it's not the greatest needle though, but. Uh... Okay, so I got it threaded. It's not the greatest needle eye, but we're only doing a short seam. So I thread first, then I clip it from the spool. Um, thread has a nap, so the needle is at the opposite end of the spool, and I knot the spool end of the thread. And yes, I also use knots, because I want my stitching to be nice and secure, and I don't want it to fall out. So there's the knot. I can't see it, but it's focused. No, no, it's all right. Satite. Satite. All right. Okay, so I'm holding my fabric kumsa so that I'm working from the wrong side of the trousers, the lining side. I'm going to come up in between the layers of lining with my knot. So my knot is buried. And I'm starting the seam a little bit away from that, what's going to be that cut edge. And now I'm going to fell the lining to the front of the trousers. And so I've come up in the fold I'm going to take a stitch so that it pricks my finger and come back in and find the fold of the lining. See? I'm going to go in through the wall so it pricks my finger. Can you see there? Mm -hmm. Go back in and pick up the fold of the lining. And I'm going to give it a pull. And if you do this a lot, your finger is going to have prick marks in it. Now what this is doing, it's cupping that front edge, but it's also nailing all of your seam allowances down and together. My needle is unthreading itself. Oh, I can hear Duff snoring in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got a good map on.
you can really start to see the cup there now. And what that cup is going to do is going to hold the fall of the breeches to the waistband a lot more securely when it's worn on the body. Because human beings are round. We all are. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting close to the seam allowances here and it's going to be thick. So I'm going to go through and through and through and through. Good seam allowance tug there. Through. Through. And one more. And now that I'm past those seam allowance, I can go back to doing it all in one motion. I'm only ever picking up the fold of the lining. And get close to the edge there. And now I'm going to knot again. And probably a second time, trying not to unthread my needle at the same time. Now, the last step, I'm going to hide the end of my thread in between the layers of cloth. Can't see it anywhere. You don't want to clip too close to the knot because then your knot will untie itself. And clip there and the tail is hidden. And I'm going to find another needle for the next hand sewing bit. Now. Okay, that was for shredding the, the Yeah, the... it was shredding. <clears throat> You can see the cup there. It's cupping this way and it's also cupping this way. I don't want to press that cup out. I have a ham. Ooh, it's got a nice cup going this way too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really happy with how that turned out. And that is only achievable, um, it's achievable a little bit through uh, cutting nicely, but also hand sewing. You can't do that by machine. So now what I'm doing is I'm laying the fall over the ham so that it stays cupped, stays cupped, nice cup this way. And I'm going to steam. And 
and let it dry. That means I'm going to let it sit on this ham until it's back to the proper temperature. I'm going to have a mouthful of coffee. All right, so while this is drying and cooling off and becoming shaped, I'm going to move on to the next step. This is probably the most important step of fall front breeches. It's preparing the plackets. You don't want to sew these without preparing them because otherwise you're just going to be exercising frustration. So the wrong side is up. Right side, wrong side. Very easily to see on this beautiful twill fabric. I am going to turn up my seam allowances, pressing them as I go. So the first step is the cross piece. Move that piece of thread out of the way. And now as I'm holding the iron onto the cloth, I'm going to press that first bit. Pressing it with my trusty old clapper block, which literally was a piece of firewood that Pierre cut into shape for me. It's not um, waxed or um, oiled or anything. It's just left raw and he basically took a piece of firewood and cut it into a block and sanded the edges for me and that's what I use. And what that does is it pulls the steam and the moisture out of the fabric. So it really nails down that um, fold up that I've just pressed. Okay, now on to the next seam allowance. Now I'm just folding this, I'm not doing anything special no miters there needed. Mind you, you could if you wanted to. I'm gonna steam that and press it with my pressing tool. Honestly, if you can take a day even and really practice it, your pressing, your work is going to be so much better. Now I'm going to press that long edge up. Remember that fingers are protein and irons are hot. Don't burn yourself. I do it on a regular basis and have to remind myself that fingers are protein, just like a steak. Coming back in with my pressing tool. Now I'm also going to do this long edge over here. And you'll notice that I'm coming at the fold with my pressing tool. I'm not coming from the cut edge. That way I can just make that sweeping motion and keep the fold going in the direction that I want it to go in. Now that that is beautifully pressed, I'm going to take that top edge, put those folds together so that they are matching nicely and try and grab a pin without stabbing myself. Pin that top edge and I'm going to stitch across that top edge with the machine because I can. My presser foot is down. That fold is put in place. I've taken the straight pin out. I'm holding the threads and I'm holding those two folds together. Back stitching and holding those all those seam allowances together as best I can and 
back stitching. Now I'm going to press that seam allowance open, turn it all and give it one last press. Here's where this point on this pressing tool is going to come in handy because I'm going to stick that point right in there so that I can then press that open. When you come to the house and I am sewing, the ironing board is full of pressing flotsam. Okay, so I've folded that to the uh, right side. I'm going to take the flatter edge of my snips and go up in that seam allowance and very carefully without shoving my scissors through that corner. I'm going to poke that seam allowance up. Okay. Now, I'm going to line up the bottom corners down here because I'm going to press that placket into place. And yeah, fingers are a protein. Now my placket is ready to sew. All right, so both my plackets are done. My right and left. You can see here that I have a right and a left placket. If you don't take the time to press and prepare these plackets, your breeches making process is going to be frustrating and problematic and you are never going to get it to lay right. These two pieces were designed to be stitched by hand. You can't just shove this through a machine and get it to look nice. And if you don't take the time to do this one little pressing step and prepare your plackets, you're going to be frustrated as hell. I'm, I'm just going to lay that out there. <laughs> this is the hardest part about making breeches is putting these plackets on. All right, so my fall is now nice and cool. I should probably stitch down the fall, the lining. Now that I can, we'll do that next. Now that everything is Cool. I flipped it over. I'm matching up my seam allowances there. Because right now I'm going to turn this edge under. pin it, and then stitch it down. This little bit of lining, believe it or not, makes your breeches last longer. So if you can bring your lining all the way down into the crotch, they're not going to wear out as quickly. In modern trousers, we take a piece of lining cut on the bias and we put a fork in which helps modern pants last longer. Okay, and now I'm going to flip that curve over to this side. Smooth it all out nice and flat. And 
And I'm being careful not to pull on that bias at all. I'm just folding it under. Random odd straight pin there. And I'm going to use navy blue thread with this because I don't really want it to be a giant arrow to the crotch. Okay, I have my thread, my needle threaded in navy blue thread, and I'm just using regular sewing thread. The end is knotted. I'm coming up in under the lining, hiding my knot. And now I'm just doing a little running stitch and I'm holding the fabric so that I can feel the needle pricking my finger on the other side. And I'm using a small needle and fine thread and making the tiniest stitches I possibly can. You could do this by machine, but why would you want machine sewing to show? That and I have more control over the fabric when I'm using my hands. And you don't have to back stitch. In fact, if you back stitch this, you'd have to do it from the front side. It would be a royal pain.
you could stop it a little bit shy of that seam allowance edge but I'm not going to worry about it if you wanted to cover the seam allowances in the crotch there I'd stop it back here and finish that crotch seam first before folding everything under but I'm not going to worry about it remember I'm going to finish my thread by going oh didn't quite go in between the seam allowances there by going in between the fabrics to hide the end of my thread. And now I'm going to press that flat. Okay. So I've pressed that flat and that's what the seam looks like on the right side. You can barely see it. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. All right, I'm back to plackets now. <laughs> I'm taking the placket, and I can see where the bottom of the fall is by my stitching line, and I'm opening up that placket and placing it there to make sure that I've cut the placket long enough before I cut the slash. Now I'm going to very carefully, I'll mark that in chalk so you can see it. There's the end of my slash. Here's the top of my slash. That's the line I'm going to cut on, and I'm going to end at that cross part. And I don't cut both of them at the same time. I only cut the one that I'm working on. Okay, so there's the placket that I'm working on. I'm going to put it onto the fall. I want that seam allowance, that seam line rather, to be at the very top of the fall. So I'm opening up the placket. Lining up that seam line with the top of the fall and then working my way down. Being very careful not to pull anything out of shape to just open up the placket and pin it in place. And I'm feeling where my seam allowance is on the back side with my fingers. And I've got about a quarter of an inch seam allowance happening there. Get that ruler out of the way. See? Okay, so that placket is in place. And now with a fine thread, I'm going to stitch it down. So I have my thimble on, I have a really fine needle and some regular sewing thread and yes I'm using Gooderman 100% polyester thread. It doesn't matter, it's what I have in the appropriate color. My thread is knotted on the end, I'm going to come up in underneath that placket and hide the end of my thread. And then 
with a little whip stitch, I'm going to stitch the fold of the placket to the fall of the trousers. And I'm going through all of the layers. I can feel it. I can feel it in this finger underneath. I'm literally holding the cloth like this and I'm pricking this finger as I'm sewing. You could do this by machine with top stitching, but it would be an exercise in frustration. And why would you do that to yourself? It really doesn't take that much longer to do it properly by hand. And remember the engineering behind these garments was pre-sewing machine. So there is not a whole lot of places where the sewing machine is appropriate. Bit of dog hair there. I'm sewing up to my straight pin and then taking the straight pin out. And my stitch length is probably at about, oh, it's probably at a three millimeter or four millimeter, as small as I can make it. The small needle helps. And being very careful to finish my sewing so that the top of the fall lines up with the seam line on the placket. Okay, and I've pulled my needle through to the wrong side. And there you can see my stitching line. Now I'm going to stitch down the back of the placket. And I'm going to lay that down nice and smoothly and stick a straight pin in there to hold it in place. And I want the back of the placket to line up with that stitching line. And it's going to take a little bit of finger futzing to get it nice and smooth. And when I'm doing this half of the seam, I'm only picking up the lining. 
and I can feel if I'm going through to the wool side with the finger that's on the back side of the seam holding it in place and I'm whip stitching this down so if you feel the needle you pull back yeah if I feel the needle I, I just pull it back I think I need to clip that fall ever so slightly more so that things will lay nice and flat, which they will. You want, don't want to clip it too much because there's no... Uh, the add-on saw, saw has not been invented yet. I'm just going to fold that out of the way so I can bring that up nicely. Now I am picking up the wool here, but I'm making sure that I'm not going through a whole lot of layers there. And I've taken that bare edge out of the way. And now I'm just stitching the back of the placket to the front of the placket. And I'm gonna finish off my thread And now I'm going to do the other side exactly the same as this side. All right, so I'm working on the other placket now. This one is at that point where I can continue on with the next step. But uh, I just realized that um, there is a direction to my sewing. So I'm wanting the fold heading towards my right hand because I'm right handed. So this placket is going to be stitched down to the bottom of the point. I'm going to finish off my thread, turn it all to the inside, and then work back upwards because then the fold of the placket is on the right-hand side so I can pick it up. So a little different than the, than the other side, but uh, the same process. So the pockets are now on the fall. Nicely stitched in place. I haven't stitched down the points at all. 
I'm going to wait and do that after I put the bearers on. Now we're going to tackle the bearers. So I've got two wool and two linen. And I'm going to start by lay them out as right and left and right sides together. I'm going to stitch this curve by machine. So because I am stitching that curved edge, I am pinning that curve uh, because pins will give you more control over the fabric and you don't want the two edges to stretch out of alignment. I've put a pin at the beginning and a pin at the end and a pin and a pin and pin the middles so that it's nicely the same. And again, the pins are going across the seam allowance so that I'm not easing it into any shape. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to line the fabric up with the edge of the presser foot, putting the presser foot down, holding on to my threads, back stitching. I'm going to sew up to the pin and then remove the pin. stitching and then I have my other piece that I'm going to do the same thing stitching. Clipping my threads. There's nothing worse than seeing a nest of threads hanging from your garment. And now I'm going to press those seam allowances open. So this is another pressing tool that you're going to find in secondhand shops. I paid 99 whole cents for this one at the Salvation Army or Value Village or Big Brothers Big Sisters. I don't remember which, but it was secondhand. Um, most people don't know what to use them for and they get bought. And then when grandma dies, they go to the Salvation Army and you can pick them up for cheap, cheap. Otherwise, if you're buying them new, they're like $25, $30 at the fabric store. Okay, so I'm going to use this curve and I'm going to stand the presser, pressing tool like that and I'm going to lay the fabric over that edge, open it up with my fingers and steam. And then I'm going to work my way around. And if you hold the fabric taut over the curve, you can then open it up with your finger and hold it in place in usually one motion. Pressure of the camera. P pressure of the camera, yeah. So that seam is now pressed open and I can turn it and it's nicely pressed on that side. And now it's just going to do what it needs to do and I can press it flat. And 
And because my seam allowance is only a quarter of an inch, there's no need to clip. Clipping just adds stress points, so I don't use them very often. If your home ec teacher taught you how to press properly, you wouldn't need to clip. Okay, now that these bearers are pressed flat, we're going to fell that curved edge and make it stay put. I've threaded my needle with my top stitching thread. I've changed out the needle so you're noticing I'm using a much bigger needle this time because it's got a much bigger eye and it's not going to shred the thread as I work. And I've come up in the fold of the linen and again I'm just going to pick up the blue and come into the fold just like I did with the top edge of the fall. This is probably one of the most important stitches that you're going to use in historical clothing and I think I have another video of just me felling so you can see what it is. Here I'll put a link up. But here it is again. And again, you're just seeing the top stitching. And that's where all that top stitching comes from. It's actually felling. It's not done from the top at all. Now that that is stitched, you can see the little top stitching line, I'm going to press them flat. And let them dry. Now that my bearers are stitched and pressed, I'm going to fold under this seam allowance, which is the seam allowance that's going to go up the placket side of the fall. So I'm going to start on the wool side. And now on the linen side. And I want the linen side to be ever so slightly smaller than the wool side.
right, back to the trouser fronts now. I've put the fall out of the way and I'm dealing with this seam right here. And I want to cover that seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. And that top edge is going to line up. And I'm going to pin that in place. And again, I'm being careful not to stretch either of the fabrics at all. I'm just laying it in place and pinning it. And I'm going perpendicular to the seam. And I'm going to stitch right down to the um, slash mark. And the bearer is going to be longer than the slash. By about inch and a half and then that's going to get closed up and just hang out inside the breeches like that okay so now with my fine thread I'm going to whip stitch down bring that over close that up stitch up that inch and a half and then stitch the lining in place. Same as I did on the plackets over here. I am now ready for the next and final step of the fall front, which is to sew down these little points and make them all nice and pretty. The inside bearers are nicely stitched down and you can see that they hang down below the points. And this keeps uh, keeps everything tucked in. The shirt does a good job of that, but uh, this these bearers keep everything tucked in and nicely enclosed. Decently tucked in. Decently tucked in and enclosed. <laughs> okay, so all I'm doing now, everything has been stitched up nicely there. All I'm doing now is pinning those to the fronts of the breeches and I'm going to top stitch a little triangle. I may, uh, no, I may not. Um, I was going to say I may futz that triangle a little bit better, but uh, since they're the same on both sides, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to use my uh, top stitching thread and just make a nice little triangle there. So I have my little pointy bit in place. My thread's been knotted. I'm going to come up underneath that pointy bit. I'm going to tuck my thread in underneath that pointy bit. And now I'm going to do a little spaced back stitch. And I'm being careful to keep things out of the way on the back side and only going through the layers of wool that I need to go through. I'll go up to that point. And then across. The bottom.
I'm going to tackle the side seam pockets, also known as the dog ear pockets. And what I've done is I've put my two right sides together and I plotted out the top edge of the dog ear pocket so that there's enough room for a hand to fit in. I've made my chalk lines. I've put in tailor tacks so that I can then transfer those markings over to the other side and that both pockets are the same. Here are my pocket bags. And what I'm going to do is Taking out all those extra threads. Right sides together. I'm going to pin along my chalk line. And it's one layer of the pocketing. And if you lay the pocketing out like that, the pocket's going to sit like that, but it's only going to, it's going to be on the inside. So I know to pin those two edges together. Now, what I'm going to do again, by machine, I'm going to stitch starting at this point along here and along here and finishing at this point. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, so because I want to start at that chalk line and I want to make sure that I'm starting and finishing at those chalk lines, I've put my needle down first before my presser foot. I'm still going to hold on to my thread. And I'm going to backstitch. Be careful not to backstitch too far. There we go. And I'm going to follow my chalk line. up to the corner and I'm going to back stitch at the corner I'm right at the corner and I've put the needle down now I'm going to lift the presser foot pivot put the presser foot down I'm keeping that bunch of surging out of the way and back stitching again to the corner and continuing on and I'm going up to that chalk mark and back stitching and done. And then we'll do the second one. Okay, so I flipped it over to the linen side so you can see my stitching. I've gone over a little bit here. It's not going to break the bank. This is about the only time you're going to see me clip into the seam allowance and you need to do this to get things to lay smoothly. You're going to clip right to but not through the stitching line at the front part and at the side seam. Alright, you're going to trim off your corner. Being careful not to cut through your stitching. And now you're going to trim your seam allowance down to a skinny quarter inch.
Next up, I'm going to press those seam allowances open. I have my trusty pointy pressing tool out again because we're going to go into that point. I'm going to flip it around this way so that I'm not messing around with the seam allowance for the top of the fall. Okay, as a truck drives by, welcome to rural Nova Scotia. Now I'm going to stick my thumbnail up in that point and turn the point. And because you've trimmed away your seam allowances, that point's going to trim nicely and turn nicely. I just gave it a, a little bit of a tiny poke. Now. And because you've clipped into your seam allowances there, your seam allowances are going to lay flat and lay flat here. And I'm going to press that flat. And that's what that looks like. And now, because I want that top stitching there, I'm going to go back and fell that seam down with my top stitching thread. Okay, so I have my thread, my nice top stitching thread. I'm coming up in the fold of the linen. There we go. I'm not terribly worried about those uh, Taylor's tack threads. You're not going to notice them once they're, once the garment's made up, if they're stuck in the seam at all. I'm barely rolling that seam, barely, barely, because I don't want to roll it so much that the corner is going to be puckered out of shape. If anything, when I go into the wool, I'm going on an angle like that. And uh, that's what's nailing down my seam allowances. When we get up to the corner here, I'm being really careful not to roll that corner at all. Because otherwise you'll get a big old pucker of fabric that you don't want to happen because it won't be pressed out. Trim that thread off. Make my knot. Now that I have felled that top corner edge, you can see that it's starting to do that dog ear thing that it does. I'm not going to press that out of shape at all. I'm just going to let it go. But uh, what I am going to do now is by machine 
I'm going to stitch the curve of the pocket, turn everything to the wrong side and double stitch it so that it's a French seam on that pocket and all nicely enclosed. And I'll do that and I'll show you the process. So because I'm double stitching this pocket to make a French seam, I want a really small seam allowance to start with. I'm going to be following this line in on the presser foot that you can see right there. That's going to give me an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch and go around. Now, if you find that this seam is hard to do with such a small seam allowance, make a bigger one and just trim it off. You can also slow down your sewing machine. That helps too. And yeah, I've cut the pocket bag out this way, but I'm gonna go all the way up to this point and trim off that seam allowance when I'm done. Now I'm gonna trim off that seam allowance, turn the pocket bag to the right side, give it a press and do another seam. This time uh, I've turned and pressed my seam allowance. This time I'm gonna use a quarter inch, so I'm gonna line the pocket edge up with the edge of the uh, presser foot right there and that's gonna give me a quarter inch sewing. Don't forget to back stitch. And hold on to your thread so you don't get a big old gnarly bit of thread on your back side. And backstitch at the other end. And trim your threads. That gives you a finished dog ear pocket that's nice and deep, extra strong for carrying all of your worldly goods in, shoving your hands into, which I also disagree with, but you know, men in their clothing. Um, but that's what it's going to look like. And now both sides of the do uh, are done. The fronts of the breeches are finished and I am ready to make them pants. Now that the fronts are all finished, we can uh, build them into a pair of pants. This is the interior. So there's the bearers, there's the fall, there's the pockets. Everything is all nicely pressed. It's important to press as you go so that you have a nice finished product. And there they are from the outside. I have finished up the pants. Now that the waistband is on. Yesterday I took a few minutes to put buttonholes in. Sew some buttons on, hem them, and give them a good press. And now they're ready to go. And there's an eyelet in there somewhere, right? Oh, there's some eyelets, yeah, in the back waist. Yeah, sure. So that that back waist can be opened up as needed. Adjusted, if you will, for after dinner. <laughs> so, if you have enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. 
hit the dongle for uh, notifications and don't forget to hit the subscribe button it is free my name is Kelly Arlene Grant I am proprietor of sweet shoe historical clothing and I hope to see you in the next video